Can you help Mommy unload all this stuff? Okay, sure. Thanks. Thanks. Where's Iris? Oh, here. Let me get the wagon. You guys get the signs, okay? Better late than lost. Yeah. Huh? Hi, Tom. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Iris. Hi. Did Bob come? Uh, he and the twins are home with colds. Did you bring the flyers? Yeah. Right here. Fantastic. Great work. Oh, Tom, honey, you see the ladies over there by the red pickup? Yeah. They need these. Okay. And Glenn, would you take these over there too? Bring the wagon over and then come back for another load, okay? All right. Nobody's blocking the front door. That Freedom of Access Act has everybody nervous. I can't afford to get arrested. If I miss next semester, I'll get kicked out of school. I guess after what happened last time, you can't afford to either. <laughs> not with a suspended sentence hanging over my head, no. <laughs> They'll send me straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect your toothbrush. <laughs> Today of all days. What do you say, Mrs. Cody? Can you hang tough? I took off work to do this today. Then we'll do it today. Blocking that door. Not yours, Kelly. Well, maybe the cops won't show. They're probably on their way. If the worst happens, get the boys home and tell Bob. I'll go with you. You going to the clinic? We'll escort you to the entrance. Is that necessary? You won't get through without us. Okay, thanks. Come on. Out. You brought me to an abortion mill? Well, he, he was just trying to help. He's a butcher that kills babies. 
I'm not sick. I'm pregnant. Not that he would know the difference. Pregnant. I'm a licensed OBGYN. Everything I do here is legal. I'm not any happier having you here than you are being here. And I don't like coming to work with a bulletproof vest on or being harassed here or at home. My family followed or phone calls in the night. It'll all be over soon. We're putting you out of the murder business. Well, since you won't cooperate, I suggest you see another doctor. Feigning and a weak heartbeat are not usual symptoms of pregnancy. How can you put yourself in a violent situation in your condition? Running an abortion escort service now, Liz? She's my client. She needed help. A full service law firm. You were obstructing an entrance. Now I hope you're all right, because I have to take you in. See you, doctor. left at nowhere, drove 100 miles and parked. <laughs> yeah, Dad said the only thing worse than driving out here was getting a speeding ticket. Tell me about it. Oh, no. Yeah, but it's all right. I'm having a fling with the judge who fixes tickets. Oh, really? How does hubby feel about this? Oh, he's cool. He's got a million parking tickets. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Did you see the doctor here? No. I'll see my midwife when I get out of here. Don't worry about what that quack said. I feel great. It wasn't a quack. I'm not going to argue with you, Liz. Is that why you came here? Do you have to go to jail to get your point across? I have to put my body between the babies and the abortionists. Anything less, I'm letting them go to their death while I give lip service safely protected by the Constitution. Your kids need you. You could have at least taught Bob how to cook before you got arrested. <laughs> Dad said you spent your entire savings on the fine. I helped save a baby that day. <sighs> Kelly, my client is getting a divorce. Her husband beats her and the children. The pregnancy was a result of force. And on the day she was going to do something about it, you stopped her. She won't even take my calls now. Well, if she just had the courage for one day, then abortion wasn't what she wanted. How can you know that? Women say they can't have a baby for this reason or that reason. It's inconvenient, that's what it is. That is so simplistic. She should go to a shelter. Oh. Or she could call us. Didn't you even tell her that she could call me? I didn't know the prison payphone number. You know what I mean. Adding murder to the list of wrongs is not going to make her life right. You see, that's just... Your people see the world the way that you want it to be instead of the way that it is. Having babies isn't always wonderful. I'm not going to argue with you. Good. It's not why I came. Yes, it is. You just won't admit it. Can't we just agree to disagree? So whatever happened to Stripes? Oh, out. Prison fashion has moved on. Lovely. <laughs> I think it's nice about Bob and Kelly's baby. Five kids on a teaching cell? <laughs> yeah. I like their attitude, though. They're open to life's... What, little surprises? <laughs> possibilities. Mm -hmm. I know I said I was done with having kids, but if you wanted to have that experience, I'd be willing. You wouldn't mind the pitter-patter for the feet on the walls? I could do it again. I, I just... So many people depend on me already, and... You know, I feel I'm, I'm making the world a better place without populating it. My sister can do that for all of us. No, no, I wasn't criticizing your career. Well, I've been comfortable with this decision, Jim. The many choices in my life have led me to the state of childlessness. Huh. You've been marrying a man with grown family, so it couldn't happen? Now, don't analyze it, Dr. Hemet. You are not my shrink. <laughs> well, if I have a legal problem, I'd bring it to you. I don't have a psychological problem. Even though my parents think I'm less of a woman. No, they don't. And I certainly don't.
Okay. I only put it out there in case you changed your mind. I think Grandma and Grandpa are waiting for you. Welcome home. I missed y'all so much. Hmm, did you mow the lawn? This morning. Mm. Smells wonderful. It's so quiet. I miss the quiet. Grandpa! Hey, Glenn, how you doing? How's the Good team doing? Huh? Oh, you guys doing any games? Hey! Hey! Come on, babe! Come on, come on, come on! Hey, Charlie! Hey, how's that picture in the family? Hi, you want Grandpa? Sweetheart. One for you. Oh, cute, Dad. Love the birds. Oh, that's your sister's idea, How huh? Good to have you back among the uncriminally insane. <laughs> hey, Jim. Welcome back. Hi, Mom. Okay. Welcome. Okay. Welcome, okay. darling. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> look, look, look. Oh. A double bagger. <laughs> one for you and one for your baby. Yeah, well, you don't know deprivation until you've gone without sour cream chips for a month. But I am not right now. I'm just I'm a little nauseous, actually. Then what am I going to do with this? Oh, Mom, it's beautiful. Sounds sweet. Mm -hmm. I don't remember you ever having morning sickness. Mm -hmm. Of course, every pregnancy is different. Oh, have I got a surprise for you. Your dad's baby cradle showed up. It was his, his cousin's cellar in Iowa for all... What's, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. nothing. You all right? Yeah, I'm just going to go get a, a glass of water, okay? I'll be right back. Tommy, Tommy, would you get the pretzels for me? They're, uh, they're on the kitchen table. Okay. Mama? Daddy, Daddy, something's wrong with Mommy! What, Tommy? Tommy, what is it? Oh, my Kelly. God. Kelly! Oh, no. Kelly, honey. Somebody, Jim, grab me a pillow, would you? I'll get the pair of it. Okay. All right. Hello, Mrs. Porter. Hi. Oh, your color's better. Here, let's take this off so you can talk. Thank you. Okay. You suffered a mild attack this afternoon. You need to be tested. We have an excellent cardiac care unit here, and I can recommend Dr. Ross Doria. He's a first-rate heart specialist. Why a heart specialist? Your wife's EKG is abnormal, Mr. Porter. Even without the pregnancy, it's not something you can ignore. Okay, when? I'll make an appointment for tomorrow morning, and you'll have the test results by evening. You can put that back on if you like. The freshest air on the planet. Don't worry, they have to cover their asses for lawsuits. I want to know what this is. This is twice in one month. Hi, how are you doing? Lab technician, handcuff, please report to the public manager today. Hi. Mrs. Porter? Hi. Mr. Porter, Ross Warrior. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Oh, hi, I'm... Liz, I'm Kelly's sister. Hi. Okay, well, Mrs. Porter, you have what is called pericardial constriction. It's a chronic hardening of the pericardium. Let me show you. If this is your heart, surrounding it is a membranous sac. It's the pericardium, which is normally supple to allow the heart muscle to pump freely. Now, unless we intervene surgically to remove what's become a buildup of scar tissue, the pericardium will soon get as hard as concrete. Your heart won't be able to pump efficiently. And finally, it will stop. Are you saying open heart surgery? Kelly will die without open heart surgery? Yes. But the good news is, if we fix this now, you can expect to live a long, normal life. But won't surgery harm the baby? 
Yes, and that's the other problem. The drugs that we need to use for a six to a ten hour procedure, not to mention the loss of oxygen while you're being sustained on a bypass pump, could cause brain damage or any number of abnormalities to your fetus. If it survived at all. My advice to you is to have a therapeutic abortion. <laughs> I, I know it's a shock, but it's early. This shouldn't present any problems for you. Dr. Doria, we're pro-life. We don't believe in abortion. I gave birth to four healthy babies. Twins, five years ago. I'm afraid that has no bearing on this. This disease takes years to develop and is probably the result of a viral infection you don't even remember. But I can tell you this. Your wife has a very poor chance of getting to term without a crisis. Let me help you get a perspective here. Your fetus has poor prospects with surgery and none if you arrest before viability. On the other hand, with these procedures, you can expect a complete recovery. I'm not going to subject my baby to that kind of risk. Abortion isn't something that we can consider. I'll wait. I'll, I'll just, I'll wait till after he's born to have the surgery. <laughs> there has to be something else that you can do. Well, I could confine you to bed rest for the duration, restrict your fluid intake, and prescribe diuretics. But let me stress, this is not the best way to go. But that's what we'll do. Okay. It's your call. We'll get a second opinion. You don't have a problem with that, Doctor? By all means. Please, feel free. I'm, uh, I'm gonna monitor you for a couple of days, Mrs. Porter. We'll do everything we can to get you through this. I love you. You too. You were supposed to be here half an hour ago. I'm late picking up my daughter. Oh, I'm really sorry, Evan. It won't happen again. You can go. Thanks a million. Oh, um, Tommy threw up when he got home. Probably something he ate. Phone cards, would you stop? Hey, you guys, damage control is here. Hmm, not too soon. Next time, put your dirty clothes in the clothes bag. Liz, is eating my potato chips. Well, then let's get him outside, Glenn. Come on. All right, out you go. Out you go, Bonkers. Good boy. Get going. Hey, Tom, you okay? Evan said you were sick after school. Yeah. Want some help? No. Are you taking care of us tonight? Until your dad gets back from teacher conferences. You can wait up for him. I'll put the other kids to bed. I can do it. You're a very good helper. A very warm good helper. We better take your temperature. Glenn, Mom said no walking on the counter. Okay, right? Tommy, chill out, chill out. Come on, get down. It's dangerous up there. There you go. All right, here you go. I should see this. She'd spank it. It's okay. We're back in business here. Glenn, go get a dustpan and a broom, all right? And don't anybody walk over here till we get this cleaned up. Where's the broom? It's in the laundry closet, dumb butthead. How was I to know? And I'm not a butthead. Yes, you are. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm uh, not. Okay, okay, uh, okay, 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 guys, quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay, uh, 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 uh. Okay, everybody, we're going to count to ten. All right? One, One two, six, three, three four, nine, eleven, sixteen, sixteen two, one. <laughs> <laughs> When's my mom coming home, Aunt Liz? Mm, a couple of days. You know, you don't have to take on this whole responsibility by yourself. Is she going to die? No, honey. She's going to take it easy for a while. She's going to work real hard at getting better. And you can help. We all will. You don't have to worry, okay? 
night. Most states, even anti-abortion groups, accept abortion when the fetus endangers the mother's life. Fetus. Last week you called it my baby. Well, I didn't mean to get technical. Technically, it's a baby. At seven weeks, it's no more baby than it is a teenager. The point is, my baby isn't murdering me. He's just hanging out, hoping we get through. That's different than ramming a curette down his throat and scraping him out in little pieces. That's murder. It is not murder. Murder is a legal term that implies unlawful, malicious... I'm not going to die of heart failure. You're going to debate me to death. Look, I, I, I got a weird disease, and I'm pregnant because of failed birth control, neither of which was my choice. Well, then don't call it choice. Call it playing the odds. <laughs> you wear me out. I don't want to lose you. Come here. I need you. I really need you to get through this. I need your strength. I need your sense of humor. You can't change me. Please stop trying. It's not a debate I want to win. It's your life. An innocent life depends on me. If I don't protect it, who will? You're innocent. Who's going to protect you? No emergency. Um, I just want to talk. Okay. Um, five minutes for him to finish the exam. Okay. Just... <sighs> You've got to turn Kelly around. The answer to the world's problems is respecting life, not destroying it when it gets in the way. Put down your pamphlet, Bob. We're talking about your life's companion, the mother of your small children. You don't have to tell me who she is to us. Now, I don't know how to talk to you, Liz. You know, you're on a different plane from us. Yeah, Earth. Haven't you ever felt the inner peace that comes from doing the right thing? Yeah, well, I don't feel it now. I feel awful. Waiting for Kelly's heart to conk out so you guys can feel inner peace. Well, this isn't about how you feel. Well, I think I might have to do something about it. Legally. Force her? Oh, God, don't make it worse, Liz. This won't be easy. We would really appreciate your support. Oh, will that work for you, too? Mom put together a schedule so we can help Bob and Kelly when she's laid up. I thought if we all take turns and I'd called a pro-life group to help, seven months will fly by. Looks like you've covered all the bases. Yeah, except one who's going to take care of the kids when Kelly's dead. Ah, oh, 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 Ma. Oh, here, here, here. Oh, let me get a bandage. No, 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 no. I'm fine. No, at least no. run some water on No, 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 I'm just fine. Mom, Kelly doesn't need casseroles. She needs you to talk some sense into her. She won't listen to me. Well, why should she? You don't know anything about having babies. You have no maternal instincts. Marion, that's not fair. Uh, what's going on? Well, Liz wants me to talk Kelly into having the abortion. <laughs> Take a hell of a speech. None of us be alive that long. You can't go for that. You're not a fanatic. Kelly says women don't die from heart failure having babies. Doctors always predict the worst. It's a scare tactic to make more money on unnecessary surgeries. It ought to be against the law. There is a law against it, bud. That's not what seems to be happening here. Listen to you. Look at you. You're making casseroles. You're threatening to sue for malpractice. God has always been good to us, Liz. He's not going to take our little girl. Oh. He lets millions of other people's children die every day because he really likes Bud and Marion Cromwell. Don't take that tone with me, young lady. Now, you never talked like that before you went to law school. I never had to watch my sister die before. And I can't get anyone in this brain-dead family to do anything about it. Oh. Liz. Hi, Kelly. Bob says you harassed him at school. Mother practically cut her finger off when you started in on her. Please. Stop trying to coerce me. It's not working, huh? No. Stop. I hear you. Good. Bye. 
I'm so thirsty. I used to have three cups of coffee before breakfast. Now I can only have 1,000 cubic centimeters of fluid a day. Am I drinking your allotment? Oh, no, Mother, don't worry. I know exactly how much juice is in that glass. So, what did the pro-life doctor say? He agreed with everything Dr. Doria said. In fact, he says I'm lucky to have Doria. He's the best. Well, I've got the name of a cardiologist at the University Medical Center. He's also pro-life. Mother, please, stop looking for doctors. Nobody can give me better odds. Listen, I, I was... I just want to make sure. <laughs> Who was it? Glenn? I said I wanted to sing a song, okay? I didn't ask you to tune up the tempest. Hey, you. What are you doing there? No laughing. Don't encourage him. I'm a bar porn. I can do it better. <laughs> can we finally sing a song now? Too disgusting for you? Hey, you want to be my birthday again? You okay, Tom Thumb? What's wrong with Mom? Your mom has a heart problem. I thought she was having a baby. That too. But your mom is sick because there's something wrong with her heart. And as soon as the baby is born, we're going to have it fixed. Why can't you fix it now? Because that would kill the baby. And your mom is not going to allow anything bad to happen to any of her children. Is mommy going to die? You can tell me. I won't tell the other kids. No. I don't know, sweetheart. I wish I could tell you for sure, but... Uh... We are doing everything we can. I'll kill myself if mommy dies. If I lost your mom, and then I lost you, I think that my heart would break into tiny little pieces. Do you understand me? I didn't know you were here, Bob. Come on. Come on in. Hello, bud. Just uh, fooling around with something here. I haven't drawn one of these since I retired. <laughs> What's on your mind? Um. Hmm. Are we doing everything we can? Now, if you wanted permission for an abortion, you wouldn't come to another pro-lifer. Well, maybe I came to the one other person I knew couldn't stand a loser. Yeah, I'm hanging in there, you know, hoping and praying. Last night I told my boy I didn't know if his mother was going to die. I got uh, sick to my stomach. That's a hell of a thing. Would you condemn me for wondering if maybe we shouldn't go along with the doctor this time? Well, I've been wondering, too. Abortion is immoral for everybody else. Can my daughter be an exception? Then I say, if they take one innocent life for some sound reason, then, then what's to stop them from killing the deformed, the retarded, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the useless agent?
Tommy said he'd kill himself if his mother died. It's a hell of a thing. Got a lot of questions. Questions, bud, that I can't answer. I've got one. Why are you having a fifth child? Can't you control yourself? But I didn't know she had a heart condition. What? We practice birth control. Natural birth control is like playing Russian roulette. And this little bullet is going to kill her. It's going to kill her. If you hadn't had the miscarriage, your son would be old enough to babysit for me now. What are you hinting at, Kelly? Well, that is when you became pro-abortion, when you discovered what it felt like to be unmarried, pregnant, and trapped. I am not pro-abortion. I'm as pro-life as you are. I think abortion is a sad thing, just sometimes necessary, and people ought to be able to make that decision for themselves. You're lucky you didn't get caught during your free love days. <laughs> I hardly remember those days. Anyway, it wouldn't have changed me. You were fun then. Now you're morally superior to that sex-grazed animal that you used to be. <laughs> I was bad, but so were you. I was fun. Everyone said so. <laughs> Where did you get this stuff? Packed away with my college textbooks. I found your yearbook. You can have it back. Is this Scott? This is Scott. Did you ever tell Jim about him? I told Jim everything. Really? Do you ever regret not marrying him? Being pregnant wasn't a good enough reason we wouldn't have made it. You remember this guy? Uh, yeah. No. So you do remember some things. Oh. <laughs> Dear Kelly. Oh, don't read it. Oh, come on. Would you I just... I will never uh... forget the beauty of our first kiss. I will always love you as long as I live, and I will always treasure... Blank, blank, blank is something sacred, love, David. What is blank, blank, blank? Never mind. He was your first. Mm. Oh, David with the braces. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. You shouldn't be ashamed of your past. I'm not. Well, or if I am, I'll try to change that. If I have a future. I didn't mean that. I, I was just feeling sorry for myself. Don't, just never mind. You will. You will have a future. Bob's home. That was quick. My philosophy of shopping is hunt, kill, drag home. The uh, kids are asleep and the dishes are done. Oh, this. thank you. You have been a tremendous help. I could do more. It's not too late. I've been doing some research. I, I need to get the other bags. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for you. Look, I, uh, I want to know what you can do legally. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, I can petition the court to intervene, to order Kelly to comply with the doctor's recommendations, including the abortion. You can do that? Yes. Can you do it without my help? No. She'll never forgive me. Kelly believes in forgiveness, not divorce. If we win, you'll have time to work it out. Can we win? It's a long shot. But even if we don't convince a judge, Kelly will have to listen to the argument, and it's a good one. I can't, uh... I can't lose her. We were in this together. Why have you abandoned me? Kelly, I love you. This isn't love. 
This is betrayal. You let her twist you around. It wasn't Liz. No? Please try and understand something. Don't touch me! You hypocrite. The hearing will be short. Uh, no jury, and we agree not to appeal any negative decision in advance. God decides, not judges! Did you even stop to think that adding the stress of a court battle to this disease could kill me? Because I will fight! And you knew that! I am going to get the best lawyer in town. Get out of my house. I've seen you froth at the mouth when pro-lifers violate women's rights. How can you do it? I have a vested interest in Kelly's life. Emotionally, physically, financially, if necessary. They'll rub your nose in it. And they'll be right. Well, I believe in Kelly's rights more than she does. But as her sister, I have a responsibility to do anything to persuade... Getting a court order is coercion, Liz. Plain and simple. You should have consulted your feminist lawyer friend. I did. She told me she doesn't ever want to see a court rule that an adult woman can't make a childbearing decision. She hopes I lose. Well, you're all alone. Be careful who you give our address out to. We want to thank you for this opportunity to represent you, Mrs. Porter. This is our retainer agreement. You'll note we're not charging for our services. I appreciate it. Thank you. We've been hoping a case like this would surface. You can't lose. Yeah. Judge Barnes is pro-choice. She'll stand behind a woman's exclusive right to make childbearing decisions. Obviously, if she's pro-life, she won't order an abortion. And we could use the media. I don't want any publicity. Frankly, Mrs. Porter, this is going to be a precedent-setting case. The whole country will want to know what happens. The publicity could save innocent lives. Well, can't you just keep our names out of it? Oh, absolutely. From now on, your mother doe. Do you have a pen? Mrs. Porter, after you win, you may want to consider filing an action for malicious prosecution. This petition virtually says you're abandoning your children. It's a frivolous, bad faith lawsuit. We could run with it. I expect to have five children soon. I won't have time for lawsuits. I will not attempt to settle the emotional and moral questions obtaining to abortion. I'm interested in points of law. However, since this is a case of first impression, I'll allow some latitude. Proceed, Ms. Hemant. Your Honor, the relationship of love and duty in a recognized family unit is an interest in liberty entitled to constitutional protection under the 14th Amendment. It confers these children with the right to their parents' material and emotional support. As guardian ad litem for his four minor children, Father Doe asked the court to require Mother Doe to carry out life-saving medical treatment so that she will remain alive and well to provide this support. You're asking me to order an abortion, Ms. Hammond? Your Honor, I'd like the defendant's cardiologist to explain what the treatment entails. It's fairly complicated. Your Honor, you are being asked to order an abortion for a competent adult who has the constitutional right to refuse medical treatment. I'll hear what the doctor has to say. It sounds like you're prescribing an abortion, Dr. Doria, which is what I asked in the first place. As a first step in treating the heart disease, yes. Well, there's an answer at least. Ms. Hammett. Dr. Doria, will Mother Doe survive without the surgery you prescribe? No. Left untreated, pericardial constriction is fatal. Does the pregnancy jeopardize her life? Yes. The, it's, it's a compounding problem because the fetus is growing and making greater demands on a defective heart. And since my patient refuses surgery because of the potential ill effects on the fetus, continuing the pregnancy further threatens her life. What chance does the fetus... Um, the fetus have to survive 
if its mother has heart failure. For viability, none. Thereafter, its chances are virtually, well, extremely low. What chance does Mother Doe have to live a normal life if she follows the course of treatment you prescribe? Excellent. Thank you. What chance does Mother Doe have to deliver her child without a crisis? This disease is rare in young people, rarer still in pregnant women. Without a wide database, I can only guess. If I have to, a 10 to 15 percent chance, maybe. To reduce risk to the mother, is it possible to deliver a child once it's viable? Yes, but independent fetal... Thank you, doctor. That's what I wanted to know. Mr. York, let's get all the medical facts on the record. <laughs> doctor. Independent fetal viability happens at around 30 weeks. But by then, the mother will likely have had heart failure and lost the fetus. Isn't it true that 26-week babies can survive? Only by extreme artificial aid. Many die or have problems requiring months or years to overcome, if then. Thank you, Dr. Doria. From a psychological point of view, Dr. Obers, what should a child be able to expect from his parents? Well, besides the obvious, food, clothing, shelter, freedom <laughs> from abuse, uh, it is essential for a child to know that he is his mother and father's number one priority. How are the Doe children reacting to their mother's illness? The oldest boy is depressed and has an exaggerated feeling of responsibility to take over for the mother. The others are variously acting out or regressing. What is causing the depression and the acting out? They're worried their mother's going to die and cannot understand why a mother they know loves them could even consider leaving them. And by refusing this life-saving medical treatment, is Mother Doe, in effect, choosing to abandon her children? I object. This mother has two sets of children, born and unborn. She can't possibly satisfy all their conflicting needs. She may be forced to abandon her children if this disease kills her, but that's not her choice. Your Honor, when parents commit to the responsibilities of a family, the children have the right to rely on that commitment. A fetus, on the other hand, has no legal standing. Is Mr. York suggesting that born children have less rights than the unborn? The born children's lives are not at stake. They are. Their emotional, physical, and mental well-being are very much at stake. I'm going to overrule the objection, Mr. York. What do you have to say, Dr. Overs, if you can remember the question? It would enlarge the traditional notion of abandonment. But I would say that Mother Doe is giving primacy to her moral convictions above her children's need for her to stay alive and raise them. Dr. Overs, have you treated women who have had abortions? I have. Why were they in treatment with you? In part to resolve feelings of guilt they associate with their abortions. How would the Doe children be served by living with a despondent mother who was forced to commit a morally repugnant act? Clinical depression would affect the children. However, she can receive treatment for that. And the children are certainly not served by having no mother. In your opinion, is Father Doe qualified to raise his children as a single parent? I would say so, yes. I don't wish to be unnecessarily cruel, but statistically speaking, isn't this relatively young man likely to remarry? Objection. Relevancy, Your Honor. Marital statistics aside, Mother Doe is uniquely necessary to her children. How can we uphold the value of the life of a fetus if its mother is only an interchangeable part? Read the Declaration of Independence, Miss Hemet. If in the pursuit of happiness, mommy wants to go bungee jumping and, and, and endanger her life. Her children can't stop her from doing it. They can't stop her from doing this either. She has a better chance of surviving a bungee jump, Mr. York. Objection sustained, counselors. And bungee jumping is noted for the record. We need to stop for today. This hearing will be adjourned until tomorrow, 10 a.m.
me the football. Where is it? Right there. Wow, Connie, two stars today. Mm-hmm. They're going to get one. Uh-oh, what's the law? Mom, we're doing the rainforest at school tonight. Can you come? Oh, sweetheart, I'd love to, but I, I can't. I'm a bluebird, and we're adopting an acre. Can't you please come? They don't have bluebirds in the rainforest. They have parrots. So you don't know anything. They have bluebirds and parrots. I'll take the video camera. We can record the rainforest, and then we can show your mom when we get home. It's not the same. You don't have to stay in bed. Not to court. I'm just mean. Glenn, your mother is sick. She would go if she could. It's crap. Liar. You go to your room until I tell you to come out. You understand? Now. Come on, girls. Why do we have to go? We didn't do anything. Let's go. We don't want to. What for? Was that absolutely necessary? If we let him get away with stuff, we're never going to get him back on track. Oh, I, uh, I heated up one of your mom's casseroles, or do you want something else? Does it really matter what I want? I'm only passing through. You know, that was your lawyer that said that I would get married again, and it was totally out of line. But true. I lie awake at night wondering what's going to happen to you guys. I don't want to die. I want to go to the rainforest. And I don't want to think about another woman in our bed. It's good I'll be turned around in a minute. But not that way. I need you to hold me up, and you just cracked. And if it was my life on the line, would you be so willing to ask me to give it up? She's stable. But I'm going to have to keep her here again, Bob. No more court for her. Our lawyers or media or any of the rest of it. She won't want to stay out of it. Are you prepared to spend this entire pregnancy in intensive care? Because this little room can eat up the cost of four college educations pretty fast. I can provide for my family. The point is to reduce her stress. I'll explain it to her when she wakes up. Thanks. But the hearing will continue today. I got the kids off to school. Well, sit down, darling. Your breakfast is ready. Uh, thanks, honey. You already butted those. This is all Liz's fault. It's not her fault. Well, Kelly's in the hospital because her sister's playing God. 
Kelly's in the hospital because she's sick and she's trying to have a baby. Because of what we taught her, Mary. And if she wasn't trying so hard to do the right thing, she could be out of this damn mess. Are you saying that this is our fault? I'm saying that it's hard to think that something that we taught our little girl is going to end up killing her. But there it is. Don't say that. Kelly's going to pull through. She just needs a little rest. This, this circus. You should put a stop to it. You want me to stop the hearing? Well, why not? You can't do that. Why not? I can't stop Liz. Bob would listen to you. I can't. You mean you won't? Oh, but... What must you think of me? That I'm a mother who's willing to stand aside and let her daughter die? I didn't say that. And my own daughter would give up her life for her child? We just take life as it comes, right? Trust that God in his infinite wisdom knows more than we do. We do the right thing. I don't know how else to live. So how did I get to be the bad guy? Marion, you're not the bad guy. You're not the bad guy. You should put a stop to it. No. Your Honor, Roe v. Wade recognized a woman's fundamental right to decide whether or not to bear a child. Nothing is held more sacred in common law than the right of every individual to the possession and control of his own person. This forms the basis for our right to accept or reject medical treatment. The 14th Amendment guarantees that no one can force us to save ourselves. It also protects the right of bodily integrity against surgical invasion for another person's benefit. Your Honor. In medical intrusion cases, the constitutional liberty interest is not always protected. The courts have had to balance the competing interests on a case-by-case -case basis. I'd like to make my point, Ms. Hammett. I waited while you presented your case. I distinctly remember sharing the pulpit with you, Mr. York. You'll have closing remarks, Ms. Hammett. Mr. York, please. Thank you. Now, if you can't be ordered to have surgery in order to save your own life or anybody else's, how can you be ordered to have an operation for the sake of healthy children? Uh, we can all appreciate the emotional appeal of the argument, but it cannot match the weight of Mother Doe's constitutional rights. It's Tom Thumb, number one son. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Dad. What are you doing out of school? I had a tummy ache. Yeah. He wanted to see his mother. When can you come home? Well, doctor says a couple more days. Maybe even tomorrow, okay? Okay. Hey, honey. Mm -hmm. Kids made these get well cards oh. for you. <laughs> we lavvy you, Mommy. Form, Conant, and Becca. They can't spell. Hey, well, they draw really well, though. This must be Form, Glenn. Get well right now. Your son, Glenn. What did you bring me? A little box. Mm, what is it? Diamond ring? No. A puppy? Come on, Mom. <laughs> a lizard. Oh, sweetheart. It's a pin. Number one mom. I bought it with my own money. You did? If you're gonna cry, are you? Dearest Bubby. That's just a joke. It's... never mind. I know how you believe about killing babies is wrong. Like those other ladies at the abortion mills do. Because it's inconvenient. But if you want a baby, why don't you adopt one of theirs? 
and then you won't have to be sick and die. Because I would miss you so much. And I will be good from now on. Love, Tom. Tommy, come here. That was a lovely letter. Oh, I don't quite... Sweetheart, I can't trade this baby for someone else's. But why? Other ladies don't have to die to get a baby. I am not going to die. I am not going to die. But Dad said it wasn't for sure. Sweetheart, you must believe. How can you leave us? A caring woman who loves her children, who dearly wants her incipient child, is the only person who can make this choice. She knows better than all of us what is at stake here and how able she is to carry this burden. In closing, I ask you to imagine this. Mother Doe is ordered to have an abortion. She refuses. She is taken by force, strapped to a table, drugged, her legs are opened wide and her child torn out of her body. She's left to her sorrow to recover her dignity, her mental, emotional equilibrium while everyone else goes home and washes their hands. I ask you, is this how we treat an innocent woman in a civilized society? I had a few points of my own for Ms. Hemet. Oh, don't worry about it. Bob's handling it. Oh, I mean, uh, Mr. York, not Bob. Your lawyers are they're good, very good. Are you joining ranks with Bob and Lizzie, Dad? No, no. I, I think what they're doing is wrong, but I, I love them for doing it. Can you blame them? You're not going to try to convince me to take the easy way out. Look, honey. Honey, maybe, uh, see, maybe this is one of those misconceptions. Abortion is not easy. Uh, I want to, uh, want to... Save me? I'm praying, and I'm really listening. But I don't hear a better answer coming back. Then you already have the answer. And no one can tell you what to do. Not even me. If you are going to bring a child into this world, it's an 18-year commitment. Minimum. It is the most demanding responsibility adults can assume in life. Because, to ensure their children's survival, parents need to make their children the top priority. This necessarily obliges them to waive or subordinate some of their own rights. If Mother Doe dies, particularly if she could have prevented it, her four small children are in grave jeopardy of growing up emotionally, physically, and mentally damaged. This damage is extremely difficult to repair, and can cause them to turn on themselves with abuses of every description. At this point, they become society's problem as well. This case tests our sincerity in boasting that our children are our greatest national resource. Unless the courts enforce the rights of children when they compete with the rights of adults, we are only giving lip service to the notion that children have any rights at all. Your Honor, these children beseech you to uphold their fundamental constitutional right to the continuation of their mother's care by balancing the competing liberty interests in their favor. Thank you. Thank you all.
There is certainly no lack of passion on either side. I will take this under submission and read your briefs. You will be notified of my decision by mail by Friday. This hearing is concluded. You did the right thing. Today. My family hates me. No, they don't. I suspect they secretly hope you win. They just can't admit it. Make me a scapegoat so they don't have to recognize there's a chink in their belief system. Every family needs a scapegoat. <sighs> I can cook. Boiling water is the hard part. Turn the flame down. I compromise my ideals, and nothing is achieved except a lot of hurt feelings. Well, I'm not worried about you. Your ideals and your heart are in good shape. I think that makes you a nearly perfect person. You're not the only hypocrite. New York cited pro-choice rulings he spends the rest of his life trying to strike down. I felt like I was up against myself. I won't say I told you so. And I'm so glad I don't have to hear it. I admire Kelly. Whoops. I should have fed you sooner. She doesn't admire me. You know, she's my best friend. But it's over, right? And you've made this really great dinner, and I'm totally drunk. And it is over, right? I admire you. I think you did a loving thing. I just wish that lobster and baked potatoes could make you feel a little better. Can you make me feel better, dear man? My students' homework papers. Yeah, Mom said you were falling hopelessly behind, so I thought I might as well make myself useful. How long are you gonna be angry at me? And this is. The most difficult thing I've ever had to face. I needed you. I should have been there for you. I want you to live. Can't apologize for that, but. I didn't care about the price our baby was going to pay, and I forgot about what it is we're trying to do here. It's the hardest thing you've ever had to face, too. Oh, I missed holding you. I'm sorry I made you sleep on the couch. much time. It's all right.
Mom took the kids out for pizza. Did it come? I didn't want to open it without you. In the matter of Doe versus Doe, I find for the defendant. Notwithstanding the convergence of competing and substantial interest, the right of the mother to choose against an invasive and unwanted surgical procedure outweighs the children's interests okay. in their mother. You won. Yeah, they don't get it, do they? It's not my choice. I don't want to win by the same laws that allow other women to have abortions. She should be happy, for God's sake. She's speaking to you yet? Yes, but... Then she can speak to me. Turn right around out of here. Leave me alone. I wanted to say I was sorry. No, you're not. You'd do it again tomorrow. You knew you couldn't win. You just put on this little show to teach me a lesson. Oh, as if you could learn anything. Small-time lawyer sues her sister to get a few thousand column inches in her anti-life bulletin. What, you think you're gonna get extra points in heaven for being on TV? After all this, you still don't get it. No, you. You are a fanatic. You are using your children to be a martyr. And you, you're an arrogant, self-indulgent baby killer who couldn't cut motherhood of her life dependent on... All right, her. stop it, Kelly. Liz. Maybe you shouldn't come around for a while. Glad you came. Sure wasn't Dad's idea? No. It's my idea. I missed you. Oh, she could have called in four months. I was worried I wouldn't get past the answering machine. Look, darling. We're ready to forgive and forget. You know we love you. You were the special one. We put all our hopes and dreams into you. Is this the latest photo? Mm hmm She's doing so well. Oh, she looks good. 27 weeks now. But 26 in four days. Well, anyway, she's feeling good, following her doctor's orders. Is someone with her all the time? She looks too big. Maybe it's the fluid retention. You know, the doctor said... No, no. We all know she's in the danger zone. Don't worry. I mean, we have emergency backup systems coming out of our ears, honey. Okay? Just take it easy. She's fine. That is delicious. Well, thank you. See you, Glenn. Bye, Dad. Have a good day, kiddo. Okay. Tommy, don't let them forget their lunch boxes. See you later. <laughs> Kids are off. I should go. When's the, uh, who's coming today? Uh... What? What's today? Wednesday. Thursday. Sir, uh... Oh, Iris. Yeah, you go ahead. She should be here in a minute. I can wait. What? Are you all right? Yeah, tired. Tired of being in bed. I'll see you later. Okay. Yes? 
I'm Sylvia Sheck. I'm here to take care of Mrs. Porter. Beatrice couldn't make it today. I, I thought today was Iris. I don't know Iris. I was told this was my day. Don't look so worried. I'm very experienced. <laughs> good. That's good. All right, uh, come in. I'm running late for school. Uh, um, Kelly is in the first bedroom at the top of the stairs. Just ask her to give you instructions. Emergency numbers are taped to a phone in every room. And what? I have a beeper, so please call me first. Good thinking. I'll take care of everything. Have a good day, Mr. Porter. All right. Thank you. Hello, dear. I'm Sylvia. I guess there was a mix-up. Shall I try to get your friend Iris for you? No, it's okay. How do you feel? I'm tired. I really like to go to sleep. Your husband was running late. He said that you would explain the emergency system. Okay. Hand me the phone. I'm going to the store. You want anything special? Yes, uh, a bottle of youth. <laughs> Make that too. Oh, and a straw. <laughs> well, keep your ears open for the telephone, will you? Eh? I said keep your ears open for the phone. Eh? Oh, fine. Honey, look, I, I got my vibrator doom fudget right here. Now you go to the store. Ready for your lunch. My pills. I'm feeling funny. Can you take my pills, please? Sure. What do they look like? Blue bottle. Oh, I uh, spilled some pills. It's okay. Here's your medicine, dear. Call Bob. First button. Yes. All right. He left his beeper here. Call oh, my mother. What? Oh, God. Did you call 911? Yes, but they're not here yet. Okay, um, I'm on my way. Keep doing what you're doing. I'll be there in less than five minutes, okay? Bye. <laughs> She's hardly got a pulse. Come on. Call 911 again. come out as soon as there's any word, and they'll keep you posted regularly. Thank you. The baby died, Mom. Oh. Dad. 
She's in surgery. They're going into her heart. They're going to fix her heart dead. Will she live? It's going to be a few hours. The surgery and, uh, and a few more hours to see if it takes. Isn't that what he said? So we wait. Bob, the hospital wants to know what kind of arrangements you want to make for the baby. You can just tell me what you want and I'll take care of it. How am I supposed to deal with that? Hmm? Baby's gone. He's gone. Just tell him to do whatever they do. You need to see him. You need to hold him. Are you crazy? Do you know the different one? I don't want to see him. Kelly risked everything to give him life. You have to love him. You owe it to her. Hold him. He's never going to be able to show you what he could have been. Hold him. Let him give to you what he has to give. You owe it to him. That is perfect. Came through it fine. It looks good. Real good. for you, darling. I love you. You did real good, little girl. Real good. Hi. Listen. I lost the baby. You happy now? What? I don't 
don't ever want to see you again. Miss. Miss. She didn't mean that. Yes, she did. Give her time. No. She meant what she said, and she's right. There are certain issues that divide people, and this is one of them. And the only reason we have been so close is because we have never talked about it. Well, I guess that's about all there is to say now. Liz. Let's start to get some rest. You know, honey, Bob wasn't going to let that baby into his heart. Liz made him hold his son. She made him love that child. Now, the worst thing your sister did was to love you too much. And I don't know anything more important than love. Do you? This is my baby. Yeah. I never got to see him. I know. Liz. <sighs> if you're right. What does that make of my life? I can't change. Neither can I. Can't we just agree to disagree? I don't know how. Is this the end of us? How can that be right? Do you have any idea how much I admire you? You are so courageous. And I am desperately sorry that I made this so hard on you. I know you did it out of love. And you were always there for me. Oh. Ow. Oh. Oh. Sorry. No. Just, no, hold me. Okay. I'll agree to disagree. I can't not have you in my life. Oh. I admire you, too. No. I do. I think you'd make a great mom. I've been thinking about it lately. Don't get a heart patient. No, I'm serious. I mean, I'm still sort of debating. <laughs> I love you, too. Oh. <laughs> 